it's significant, I think, that Sadiq Khan uh, allowed his uh, intervention to be portrayed on the day before he made it uh, as a call for a debate on the customs union and the single market. Um, when it came to the actual speech, he, he seemed to row back a bit from that. Um, I, I suspect there were negotiations between Starmer and Sadiq Khan. Um, so we may hear a bit more about Brexit uh, until the uh, mayoral election in, in May. Um, but then it's an open question, it seems to me, uh, how far um, between May and the date of the general election the Labour Party will want to talk about Europe. Hello, I'm John Stevens. I'm the president of the Federal Trust. I'm talking once again to Brendan Donnelly, the director of the Federal Trust, about developments for the UK and Europe. Brendan, we're at the start of a new year, but looking back to 2023, how would you say that the European debate has evolved in the UK? I think it's been an important time for the evolution of the European debate. I think that more and more people who had realised that Brexit wasn't going well have now come to the conclusion that it can't possibly go well. The people who are defending Brexit, the Brexit advocates, are, are reduced to either saying that it's all going to work out spiffingly in 50 years' time, or, or they come up with, frankly, absurd, marginal, peripheral and implausible benefits. Uh, an obvious example of that at the end of the year uh, was the fuss about um, uh, champagne in, in, in pint bottles, which Winston Churchill may or may not have liked drinking. Uh, it, it's a, it was an attempt to divert from the fact that the British government had had no response and no favourable response from British industry about proposed changes to the uh, use of, of, of metric, the metric system. So we had a, a pantomime about um, uh, champagne in, in, in pint glasses. Uh, this is the way that Brexit ends, not with a bang but a whimper. Looking forward to this year, it's clearly going to be an election year in the UK, and all the opinion polls suggest that the Labour Party is going to win, perhaps with a very significant majority. Where do you think Labour policy is on Europe? And in particular, we've had an intervention from uh, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, which might suggest that there is some division within the Labour Party on this. I think as the year goes on, uh, the, the movement against Brexit, the movement towards rejoin, it, it's only going to gather pace. There's the question of the, the imposition of uh, new formalities for imports from continental Europe at the beginning of the year. And in the latter part of the year, there'll be the question of, um, of it being more difficult for British citizens um, to, to have access, unrestricted access to the European Union as a new visa system comes in. Uh, I also think that Brexit will come more and more to be identified with an increasingly uh, unpopular Conservative government. So I think there's only one direction of public opinion on that. Uh, how the Labour Party will chime in with this is, is another issue. Uh, it was very important, it seems to me, that um, Sadiq Khan, as it were, broke ranks uh, to the extent of, of pointing out um, just the, uh, how, how little um, the political class are, are willing to talk about the damage of Brexit. He had some figures which have been criticised, but but I don't think anyone is any doubt that there are economic downsides, real economic downsides now um, to, to Brexit. Uh, Keir Starmer ha has adopted a um, a particular strategy, which is the hope that he'll be able to get through the general election without offending those people whom he regards as particular targets for his uh, uh, ele electoral um, uh, seduction, uh, that's to say people from, from the Red Wall. Uh, of course, the Red Wall is quite different to London, and Sadiq Khan has got, a, got a, a, an election to win there. It's significant, I think, that Sadiq Khan uh, allowed it to be his uh, intervention to be portrayed on the day before he made it, uh, as a call for a debate on the customs union and the single market. Um, when it came to the actual speech, he, he seemed to row back a bit from that. Um, I, I suspect there were negotiations between Starmer and Sadiq Khan. Um, so we may hear a bit more about Brexit uh, until the uh, mayoral election in, in May. Um, but then it's an open question, it seems to me, uh, how far um, between May and the date of the general election the Labour Party will want to talk about Europe. What was Khan really playing at in this uh, gambit over Europe, floating it and then apparently 
a pulling back, um, presumably under pressure from Starmer. I mean, he doesn't need uh, to play the Brexit card, does he, to win the mayoralty, of uh, mayoralty election in London. Uh, I mean, he's, his opinion poll lead is very substantial. So, so what is he actually on about? Well, I, I think you can't rule out that he, he genuinely feels strongly about this issue. Um, and uh, he may have sensed something, which perhaps Starmer has been slow in, in sensing, um, that there's no harm now in the Labour Party being seen as being the, the party of Europe. Uh, because with this background of changing opinion on Brexit and rejoin, uh, I don't think there's anything like the, perceived, the possible risk um, that Starmer thought there was in being seen to be the party that wants to be much closer to Europe um, than is the case at the moment, than is allowed by the, um, the trade and cooperation agreement. It has been suggested that Khan had two considerations in mind. One, his perhaps future ambitions for the leadership of the Labour Party, anticipating that over time uh, with a Labour government, uh, the move towards a pro-European position will gather pace inside the Labour Party. And secondly, the problem of containing the Corbynista left, which is quite strong in London, but which, um, although Corbyn himself was distinctly not a pro-European, um, Many of his uh, admirers, uh, younger members of the left of the Labour Party, are actually very pro-European. And I don't know what impact this might have on how we would view opinion on Europe evolving inside the Labour Party, particularly under a Labour government with a large majority. I think it depends uh, on the result of the general election. Uh, I, I think that, that there are people within the Labour Party, very pro-European people, perhaps from the centre, even, even from the centre-left of the party, um, who are prepared to go along with Starmer's tepid view of Europe in order to get elected. And then they say the gloves will come off. We will put uh, as much pressure as we possibly can on Starmer um, in order to uh, uh, get closer to the European Union. Um, they're prepared, however, in order to make sure that Jeremy Corbyn is thoroughly purged from the history and annals of the Labour Party um, to put up with a, uh, uh, what they regard as a distinctly suboptimal uh, approach to Europe by, Karma, by, by, by Starmer. Um, I think uh, I think all parties have these slightly complicated cross currents on the European issue. Uh, and I think Labour is the victim of, of precisely these cross currents. There are uh, two other elections going on this year, which might have an impact on uh, the British general election. Uh, the first is the European parliamentary elections in um, the middle of this year, where there is a suggestion of a move towards the right uh, across uh, the European Union. Um, how might this affect uh, the UK political debate? It will not be as dramatic a shift to the right in any event uh, as uh, is foreseen glo glo gloatingly by, by some Eurosceptic critics. Proportional representation will, will ensure that there will be uh, a break placed on that, um, on that move, if indeed it takes place, which I, I think it, it, it probably will. Uh, I'm sure that the uh, uh, an another irony of the Brexit tragedy comedy, which will unfold, is to have people on the right of the Conservative Party uh, wagging their head dolefully and saying, isn't it terrible the way that Europe is going back to the right? Aren't we lucky to be uh, spared um, that horror? Uh, I don't think it will make um, uh, carry a great deal of conviction. I don't think people in this country are, are that interested in the long term in what's happening in the European Parliament. Well, you and I know they weren't interested when they had such illustrious MEPs as ourselves. If there are no British MEPs, I don't think it'll be a uh, really a front page uh, issue. Uh, it's also the point, a point worth making, uh, that the, 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 the populist right will not form, or almost certainly not form, a single coherent block within the European Parliament. They will be very divided. Um, Maloney, for instance, uh, and, and her followers uh, are very different indeed to, to Orban and his. 
Uh, and of course, we, we don't have any more um, the problem of a, a, an a extremely Eurosceptic Polish government. That's a, a development that which has gone in the other direction. So, so I, I don't think that's the, 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 the central issue. Um, uh, if we want to go on to talk about the American um, uh, ex experience, the American presidential election, then, then I think if Trump uh, continues to be, or perhaps even has been elected, he continues to be a, a viable candidate, and um, perhaps even has been elected by the time of our general election, uh, I think that will help Starmer. Uh, I think that um, the Conservative Party uh, has a minority, probably, but a, a substantial minority within it uh, of people who are, uh, are approving of Trump and will be willing to talk about Trump in positive tones. Uh, if that's so, I think that can only be to the advantage of the Labour Party, because um, uh, in this country, uh, beyond a, a small fringe of, on the extreme right, the, the, dis, the extreme disaffected right, um, Trump is, is, is deeply unpopular. Well, you've come on to Trump. Of course, there is one political party in the UK that has a very particular relationship um, with Trump. Um, or at any rate, its um, uh, real leader does, um, namely Nigel Farage and the Reform Party. Uh, having a British general election simultaneous, perhaps, with a US election is potentially, particularly one, a US election that is so important as, as the, the next one undoubtedly will be, is potentially quite an unstable situation, it seems to me. And the performance of reform, the possible performance of reform, uh, is beginning to attract some attention. There are opinion polls suggesting that they are on 10 or 11 percent. And if they were to have Nigel Farage uh, leading them once more um, fully, uh, they could do even better. Uh, the assumption is that, that they are going to damage the Conservative Party. But um, could they do better than that? Could they win any seats? Um, and I what think, do they have on the Labour Party's attitude towards the Red Wall? I, I think it's very unlikely that they'll, they'll win any seats. Um, uh, classically, uh, minority parties like like theirs um, go back um, uh, in the polls and, and in, in the voting patterns uh, on, on the day of, of the general election because people either don't bother to vote or they think there's no point or they go back to traditional parties or they have some particular desire to, to unseat or support uh, a particular MP. So I, I don't think it, it's going to be significant in terms of seats. Um, what I think will be significant for, for reform will be its relationship with the Conservative Party after the general election. And I can well at that stage see a, 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 a coming together, a, either an electoral alliance or perhaps a, a formal merger between reform and, and the Conservative Party. Uh, that will mean that there will be some uh, voters and members and even MPs from the Conservative Party from a more centrist one nation tradition um, who will leave the Conservative Party. Uh, it will be a, a fragmenting effect for the Conservative Party, um, but, but I think it, it's very likely to happen. I think the view that the Conservative Party somehow will draw the lesson from its likely um, very, um, very devastating defeat in the next general election, that it should be more centrist and more moderate. Uh, I don't think the Conservative Party is, is, is in a position to draw that conclusion, rational though it might be. One of the ways of analysing Britain's relationship with Europe, really from the start, I mean, going back before we joined the then EC, was this question of, are we closer to the Europeans or are we closer to the Americans? And the desire to have, in a sense, uh, both special relationships to be mid-Atlantic. And one of the great hopes of the Brexiteers was, of course, a much closer relationship with the United States, in particular a free trade deal, which um, both Biden and Trump seem to um, indicate is really uh, completely off the agenda. Um, but... Nevertheless, a resurgent uh, Trump will, I think, crystallise this issue once again in, in the British debate. And of course, it's not quite clear where the Labour Party might position itself uh, between the US and, and Europe. I mean, after all, uh, one of the launching elements of 
of the Bre of the Brexit process was Tony Blair's decision to go with the Americans rather than with the Europeans over Iraq. So I can't see that happening. That? I can't see that uh, happening now. I think that uh, Trump is by several orders of magnitude more unacceptable to British public opinion in general than, than Bush ever was, um, and certainly to, to the Labour Party. Um, I also know that uh, that Starmer and others, uh, who, who in many ways are following in Blair's footsteps, um, have uh, the traumatic um, lesson imprinted uh, in their souls um, that the major calamitous error of the Blair era was precisely to support the Americans over Iraq. So I think that, that if, if, if Trump is president um, and Labour are in power, I think that is the end of uh, any pretensions to a special relationship with, with the United States. It's a bit more complicated if Biden or another Democrat gets back into power, because I, I think in those circumstances uh, that there might be a bit more of a temptation uh, to, to fantasize about a, a continuing special relationship. But even Biden himself, as you say, has made it clear that uh, a, a, a very favorable free trade arrangement was, wasn't on the table. There are lots of people in Congress who'd be unenthusiastic about that. And while Trump is certainly is certainly a, a much bigger threat to the cohesion of NATO than, than Biden is, um, Biden is coming under increasing pressure in, in America um, for a more insular, for a more um, uh, America first policy. Um, I don't think it's clear that um, that Biden uh, would be prepared to uh, continue uh, the the pretty well uncritical support of, say, Ukraine and European efforts in 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 resisting um, uh, Russia in Ukraine um, uh, uh, as as he has until now. Well, Brennan, thank you very much for this. Um, undoubtedly, we will be revisiting these issues uh, shortly. Um, One final point I'd like to make, if I may, that uh, Khan's remarks based on economic analysis um, do fit in with the, the transactional view of the United Kingdom role within the European Union. Um, I think that in the medium term, the Labour Party is going to have to face up to the identity question uh, of not just saying it's good for us to um, tr trade with Europe, um, but we are Europeans. And there was quite a strong tendency within the Labour Party in the 1970s and early 1980s, which said precisely that we're all social European social democrats. We follow the European model. Um, I think it will make it uh, uh, make for very interesting viewing and, and following to see how that issue develops in the Labour Party in, in the second half of, of, of the next government. I think for the first couple of years, the Labour Party will want to um, play Europe cautiously and have marginal arrangements to improve supposedly the trade and cooperation agreement. But I don't think they'll be able to uh, evade in the medium term uh, this real issue of, of, of the European identity for the United Kingdom. Well, thank you very much for this. Um, that is something which uh, the Federal Trust will be following in subsequent videos. Yes, indeed. Happy Happy New Year to all our visit to all our viewers. Indeed.